Happy winter solstice. December 21st, 2020. Nice chilly morning, 32 degrees out here. Zero for you Celsius people. And one of the only ones I can remember. Just got done doing a little interval session. Four times three minutes with a two minute walk recovery. And then four times a minute, run a minute, walk a minute. Heading back to the house. Kind of beat up because yesterday I did do a 70 minute chug. And then I ran on the treadmill watching the marathon project. Um, one thing that was really weird is here we had more American men, seven, go under 210. They showed first and second finish. And I'm pretty sure they like they cut away to a commercial, which I get. But why not show the seven guys? Look like a pretty close bunch. You know, why not show the entire race? Not really sure why they didn't. But that's how NBC coverage does often the case. They miss out on so much stuff when we were watching the uh, Diamond League meets this summer. In fact, I know the Let's Run guys have brought it up many times how bad they are at editing and kind of paying attention to the distance events. So anyways, that was kind of what's going on yesterday. And it would be nice if uh, we'd have some rich billionaire like they do in Spain help promote and sponsor these events. Of course, many of us do this. It's not about the money, obviously. Both the elites, you know, if they're going to hit the best marks possible, they need some sort of support. And uh, especially since the rest of the world does support. They're talking about the Japanese uh, records where if you broke the Japanese record, you got like 100 million yen, which is almost a million dollars US, which is pretty phenomenal. And a couple guys have done that. And that's one of the reasons we've got you know, 25 guys under 210, and they have 120 plus guys under 210. But speaking of people just doing it for the sake of doing it, watched the movie yesterday, Dirtbag, about Fred Beckel and his so many first ascents, started climbing up in the Seattle Cascade area, which I guess is some of the only mountains in America that are alpine kind of style. And he just has hundreds and hundreds of first ascents, and he lived just to hike. And he talked about how he just drove around the country in his pink coupe and just did all kinds of crazy climbs and pretty interesting. He lived a really Spartan lifestyle, just getting by on practically nothing. And I highly recommend watching it and I'll put it in the show notes. It's called Dirt Bag. Thought I was done early today, but the weasel got up and went for a walk before she went out Christmas shopping. Christmas dinner shopping, that is. So I got home real quick, took a shower out here door dashing. Been some pretty good orders until just now, but I just had an order where I was in uh, one restaurant and a young woman I know ran in college and she's still probably in her late 20s and she didn't look so good. And I said, hey, you been running? And she's like, no, she's like, I got COVID. So it's like two people I know fairly well back to back this past week. Unfortunately, Glenn passed away from it, but he was 70. This gal's probably in her late 20s really good local runner and you could tell that she didn't look too well even now and um it's kind of sad to see and then of course she had covid and then she also had her appendix taken out so two hospitals then she had to spend so she didn't have to spend the hospital with the covid but then having to go into the hospital like i had to um during covid is just not much fun at all i don't think you ever go to the hospital is fun so i pick up that order and i take it to a business and it's amazing people work at businesses and stuff and you don't put the name of the business. Now I'd been here before, it was out in the auto mall, it was Baker sold Hyundai. And so I know where I'm going, I roll up there. It's usually a pretty easy drop off, but I walk in there and I get an attitude from the people behind the counter. And the thing was, there was a half a dozen people in the place and I just got done talking to a young lady who had had COVID. Her ha husband is actually a nurse not a uh, not yet generally a, a nurse that would be dealing with ICU patients, but because they're lacking so much people, he's working the ICU COVID patients. So I just get done talking to this poor gal who just got through COVID, just lost Glenn, and there was a half a dozen people, three of them behind the counter, salespeople, car salespeople, not a mask in sight in the entire building. Just unbelievable. I mean, whatever you want to say, I just couldn't believe. I mean, I go into lots of businesses. One reason I do the door dashing is because it's pretty safe. I mask up when I go in and when I go to everybody's door, especially when I go to doors because now everybody's got ring cams, so you might as well just have the thing on. And, you know, everybody's masked up, but for some reason, that Bakersfield Hyundai, 
not masked up. Just, I couldn't believe it. So it just was really shocking. And a quick little workout on the shortest day of the year. Just did a warm up and then two times three minutes, two times one minute. Just getting the legs turning over. That's all about winter base. This is the first little bit of speed work, leg turnover I've done for the past few weeks. Gonna head out a little later on and hopefully see Saturn and Jupiter making the big uh, Christmas star tonight. It's supposed to be the night you can see that. A week from today, as Scott, my Canadian six day buddy said, is our six days in the home. I'm not sure how far or what I'm gonna do. I guess I should do at least 100 miles. 200's doable on my own. I've done it in the past. 300 would be ridiculous. I don't want to be out here for 16 hours a day. I believe he's going to do it on the treadmill because he's in the frozen tundra of the Great White North, Canada. Um, it's interesting. I've been playing this uh, F1 mobile app game. It's fun to play from time to time. And it's kind of, kind of how I am when I'm racing. I'm terrible at time trialing. I have to have competition. And so that's why these virtual races aren't very good for me. Uh, Scott kind of enjoys them. I myself don't. And it's kind of funny because when I'm playing this F1 mobile, they have qualifying mode where you're just racing around the track with a ghost car, your opponent. And I'm terrible. And then they have sprint mode when you got other cars around you. And then grid mode. And I'm terrible at the qualifying mode by myself on the track. I'm decent on the sprint mode where we have a running start. And on the grid mode is where I score the most points. And so it reflects exactly how I am when it comes to racing. I'm just not very motivated without somebody around me. It would be nice to be in Houston this week doing that 55 hour that I had to stop early last year because of some sort of illness, which was very similar to COVID. Of course, it was back in late December, but I had lots of congestion and took weeks to recover from. But they do have a virtual race. 55 hours do as many as you can and I'm thinking well I should do 100 then I did 75 last year before I stopped and actually I went out for a hike in the Houston area I went to a place where they have that rocky raccoon 100 and walked around that swamp for another 11 miles so I actually got in 86 miles or so unofficially in the 55 but I don't think I'll do it even though the small entry fee does go towards their charity which is a really good one so we shall see, but got to go home, do my CrossFit workout of the day, sit a mile on the bike, um, 40 wall balls, and 25 burpees. Sounds like fun.